A six-year-old boy named Ray is brought to the emergency department. His grandmother called for help because he was behaving strangely. You learn that when the paramedics arrived at the scene, Ray was crying and agitated, had incoherent speech, and appeared ataxic in movement. They also noticed the smell of alcohol on his breath. During transport to the hospital, Ray was presenting with persistent forced respiration, and his level of consciousness decreased. Ray has now passed out, but forced respiration continues. Aside from this, there are no obvious signs of trauma or any other urgent medical condition. A general clinical assessment doesn't provide any clues about what happened. Ray has no obvious trauma to the head, no neck rigidity, and his pupils respond equally to light. The grandmother explains that Ray has no prior medical history. She also recalls that earlier today, he was playing outside the house while she was cooking. When she called him for dinner, she discovered his changed behavior. Due to the severity of his condition, an arterial blood gas sample is collected. For this case, here are the relevant patient results from the ABL analyzer. To interpret the report, you can use the simple tic-tac-toe method, where you note pH, pCO2, and the concentration of bicarbonate in the appropriate columns according to the reference intervals. The assessment of the patient report reveals metabolic acidosis with slight respiratory compensation. The ABL analyzer also calculates the anion gap, which is highly elevated. Something is compromising the metabolism, although the patient is receiving sufficient oxygen from the nasal oxygen supplement. Is Ray suffering from kidney failure, or is this a case of intoxication? It is valuable to memorize the different possible causes of an elevated anion gap when metabolic acidosis occurs, and then use the method of exclusion. For this purpose, different mnemonics are applicable. The acronym MUD piles can be used. MUD piles stands for methanol, uremia, diabetes, fenformin, metformin, or paracetamol, iron, lactate, ethanol, ethylene glycol, and salicylates. Thanks to your knowledge about Ray's medical history, the information supplied by the relatives and the paramedics, the clinical examination, and not least the arterial blood gas analysis, you are able to conclude that a likely diagnosis is methanol or ethylene glycol intoxication. With this information, you can provide therapy within a short time after hospital admittance. During treatment, Ray also gets a brain scan to rule out other causes of his low level of consciousness. Hours later, Ray is still affected by the intoxication, but more alert. Lab results arrive and discard paracetamol and salicylate poisoning for good, but confirm markedly elevated plasma alcohol. A new blood gas analysis shows improvement in the condition thanks to the treatment. Although a bit hungover the following day, Ray is clearly better and able to explain what happened prior to his intoxication. He admits that he drank a blue liquid from a soda bottle he found near the car. Based on this description, his grandmother is able to identify the liquid as being coolant. The patient report from the ABL analyzer revealed that this was a case of metabolic acidosis with an elevated anion gap. The blood gas analysis, together with the method of exclusion, helped to provide goal-directed therapy quickly, as well as to monitor and confirm the effect of the initiated treatment. Watch the other case videos to see how the ABL blood gas analyzer can aid in the diagnosis of diseases.